Hey there, folks. Amazing. I sound like Brett Keen just now. That was kind of scary. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Uh, Amazing Atheist here. Um, man, I'm doing the uh, response to the Christian Smell Bad video where I challenge the Christians to ask me any questions they wanted to. Uh, it seems that none of them, uh, at least not very many of them, took me up on that offer. Most of the questions I got were from atheists that just wanted to ask me theological questions, which is fine, too. And some of the questions are just silly, but that's totally okay, because who wants to be too fucking serious anyway? Yeah. Fucking, the chair was totally, this chair was, like, fucking totally fine until I started doing this video. Then it starts, like, drifting over here, like the fucking room is slanted this way or something. Um... Let's see. Oh, I should do the. I should answer the video response questions first. Um, someone asked me what I thought of C.S. Lewis's idea that uh, hell is not a place of fire and torment, but rather a place where uh, you feel the absence of God. Those who have rejected God feel his tangible absence from their lives, and that is where their pain comes from. It's merely God's withdrawal from our souls or whatever. Um, I, I don't know, I find that a, a really kind of a strange um, argument because first and foremost, before you can even use that, you have to establish what God's role uh, is to us currently. What, how, is, how are we benefiting from this, this supposed connection? Um, you have to ask yourself, I mean, what is he doing for me? What, what feelings do I possess that cannot be explained chemically? Um, a lot of people point to love. Oh, you can't explain love. If you, there, I, I have a copy of National Geographic right in my bathroom that explains the entire chemical composition of love. Um, it can be reduced to very uh, simple things. You can induce love if you really want to. Um, scientists can make a person feel whatever they want under the right circumstances, um, which is a scary thought in and of itself, but it shows that our feelings are, are, are based upon physical processes. Uh, they're not something mythical. They're not something given to us by a, a soul or a, a spirit or, or any kind of connection with a, a sovereign power in the, the sky. Um, you know, so if you're going to say that hell is merely the absence of God, then you're going to have to demonstrate the presence of God in our lives. What is his function? And to any Christian who, um, who accepts that definition of hell, I would challenge them to provide me an example of something that God does, something that, that we can look to God for. Uh, a lot of Christians pray to God for strength. But atheists pray for strength, too. We don't call it prayer, but, but we say, you know, man, i got to man up and get through this, or woman up if you're a girl. Um, I've never heard woman up used, but whatever. You know, um, sometimes they pray for uh, good luck, you know, sometimes, but we do that. We, we cross our fingers and say, oh, man, I hope this goes okay for me. You know, hope doesn't require faith. Um, you know, wanting to be strong doesn't require faith. Um, feelings don't require faith. They don't require any sort of connection. We can, we can show the chemical processes that bring them about. We can, we can show... Um, uh, we can show pretty much everything just ex using... Uh, physiology and psychology, and maybe psychiatry, you know, or Scientology. Um, what's the fucking noise? That's why I don't do videos during the day. There's all kinds of fucking noises. Um, another person asked um, uh, what I, what my opinion was of atheists who believe in things like karma and and. Um, and ghosts and whatever, and, and you know, who believe in supernatural things and just don't happen to believe in God. Um, 
are they really atheists, I guess? Uh, yes, of course, they're really atheists. Um, they cannot boast having a naturalistic worldview. Um, they certainly are not uh, staunch rationalists, but if they reject the idea of God, then they most certainly are atheists. The only prerequisite for being an atheist is disbelief in a deity or deities. Uh, maybe we should broaden the definition of atheism to exclude these people because it seems to me that most atheists don't want to be categorized in with, with people who, who have um, certain religious faiths. I mean, uh, the definition of atheism is so inadequate that Buddhists are technically atheists. Uh, most of them anyway. Some Buddhists do believe in, in, in gods. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's ridiculous that they can fit into atheism under any definition. Perhaps we should petition um, Merriam-Webster to have the definition of the word expanded in some way. But maybe that's just a waste of fucking time. Uh, why do you always need a label for people anyway? All right, now let's get to the printed questions. Could you please let us know your thoughts on Jesus is Freedom's post in which she states that homosexuality is the opposite of holiness? Since you seem to not be, since you do not seem to be a homosexual and do not seem to believe in holiness, I think you may be a very good objective view on the subject. Well, uh, when it comes to holiness, I think that you know, if any group of people loves holes, it's the homosexuals. No. Sorry, bad joke. Um, uh, the opposite of holiness, I think that that, that is, is so um, repugnant, it, it's not even biblically supported. I mean, sure, the Bible does say... Um, you know, if a man lies with another man as he lies with a woman, he shall be put to death. Um, and it's there's a few instances of the condemnation of homosexuality in the Bible. It's not just in Leviticus. It's in a few other places. It's in uh, uh, First Corinthians. I think it's in First Kings. Um, I'm no Bible expert. I could be totally wrong here. Just go to Skeptic's Annotated Bible and go to the link that says uh, gay or homosexual, and you'll get a, a little a tiny list of, of, of examples of homosexuality being condemned in the Bible. Um, the thing is, though, it is, it is certainly not the exact opposite of what Christians view as holiness. Um, it's not a commandment. It is not one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not be a sodomite. Thou shalt not be a faggot. Thou shalt not have butt sex with other guys or other chicks if you're a girl. I guess lesbians don't have a lot of butt sex. I wouldn't know. I've never been a lesbian. It's not a Ten Commandment. That's the fucking point. It is not one of the seven sins. I guess you could file it under lust, but straight people have lust. Um, it is not... It's not one of the major points that they're hammering in. It, it's really strange that so many Christians are so strongly anti-gay. Uh, when it's really, it really does not seem to be a major concern of of, uh, of Jesus or of any of the prophets uh, or any of the disciples um, or any of the major characters in the Bible. It does not seem to be that big of a, a theme there. So to say that it is the the height of sin somehow or the exact polar opposite of holiness is is just it's 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 not even founded in biblical evidence. Um, as repugnant as the Bible is, that sentiment is actually more repugnant and oversteps the bounds of what can be biblically justified, which is to say, not justified at all. Um, isn't atheism just another religion? That is Paul's ego having a little bit of fun at my expense. Um, no, <laughs> it's not. Um, for obvious reasons, uh, we don't have a, a set dogma, um, but um, it does seem that that with the all of these atheist manifestos being released, uh, the God delusion, uh, the end of faith, 
God is not great. Uh, it does seem that we are developing something of a de facto dogma. Um, although that doesn't really make us a religion, it does make us closer to a religion than we once were. It does sort of attach a, an ideology uh, to to what we believe. And um, But of course, you could be an atheist and still feel free to not embrace that ideology. Uh, unless, of course, we did ever expand the definition of the word atheist or the word atheism. Then it would be a lot closer to being a religion, but, you know, you still have to ask yourself, at what point does religion begin? I, I mean, what's the difference between an ideology like, say, uh, republicanism and a religion like, you know, Southern Baptism? Um, you know, it's really difficult to know where to draw the line. Um, does a religion have to be innately supernatural? Does it have to be? Does it have to? Does it have to include elements of faith? I mean, how are we going to define religion here? Um, at any rate, I do think that for all intents and purposes, we 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 we're definitely closer to being a religion than we ever were before, and. Um, and it seems like if you look in the um, the uh, world atlases, we are considered a religion. Uh, so it's it's kind of strange. And and you know, um, there was a recent uh, newspaper article I read that said the fastest growing religion was atheism. Um, I don't know if we should necessarily um, if we should necessarily be as down on that description as we are. Um, I mean, uh, I think we should definitely make it clear that we're not a, a an organized religion. But I don't know if it's necessarily uh, necessary. Necessarily necessary. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, me is redundant. Me no top good. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if we should be as as reactionary about that as we are, as, as quick to dismiss that notion, I think we should maybe take that a little bit more seriously uh, as atheists, uh, because it does seem like we have adopted a lot of peripheral um, notions outside of just believing in God. And, and, and when you say there is no God, it does have a tremendous impact on the way you view the world. Um, because instead of viewing things like morality as components uh, placed here by a uh, divine being who has uh, infinite concern for your actions and your thoughts and your feelings and so on and so forth, uh, you instead have to accept that it's all a matter of, for lack of a better word, chance. <clears throat> First Corinthians 11.14 states that it is wrong for men to have long hair. So does it mean it is possible that Jesus was a woman? You see what I mean about atheists having fun with these questions. Um, I actually went to a website that said that, uh, that Jesus did not have long hair. Um, and um, because of that verse, actually. Um, and of course, there is no... There's no real strong physical description of Jesus in the Bible. There's only like a few little adjectives of, of physical appearance thrown in here and there. And, um, you know, who the fuck knows? Uh, he obviously wasn't a woman, but, uh, you know, his hair length is, is up for debate of, of if anyone actually genuinely gives that much of a shit. I guess only people who look at 1 Corinthians 11.14 and say, Oh my God! Uh, are going to really give a shit about the length of Jesus' hair. Um, and YouTube users who would call him a hippie. Two questions. Try to be objective in answering this question. Do you see a parallel between the new Christian movement and its ideologies regarding the rapture and the traditional fire and brimstone of conservative church? Do you think they are both scare tactics? Okay, that was really poorly worded, but I think I understand what you were saying. Um, the rapture is, of course, um, complete, you know, utter bunk. It, it, it's something that really rose to prominence in the 1950s. Uh, this is not 
a long-standing Christian tradition. I think the first time the notion of it was ever explored at all was in the 1890s. Um, I'm sure that there is a wiki article about this or, or something like that floating around out there. You're on the internets. Go Google it. Um, is it a scare tactic? Um, you know, maybe, but if it is, it's a massive failure as one. Uh, because, first of all, if all of the true Christians that follow the Bible perfectly disappeared, I don't think anyone would really notice. Uh, second of all, if all of the Christians, who just, just the people who claim to be Christians, disappeared, we might be a little freaked out at first, but I think after that it would be a big party. Um, until we realized the Muslims were still here, of course. Uh, number two. Have you noticed the irony in the fact that Christians have free will from God and are trying to be like God, but yet they damage their cause by not extending that free will onto their fellow man, especially to gays and atheists? Uh, I'm sorry, I really just don't understand even what you were trying to ask there. Um, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like assume that what you're talking about is that they believe in free will, yet they try to limit it for certain people. Uh, like gays and atheists. Um, it is kind of strange to say, you know, you have free will, and but if you don't do exactly what we want, then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna pass all these laws against you, and we're gonna try to control your life. And this is a Christian nation, and we don't want no fags here. It doesn't really make sense. I mean, God is the one who's supposed to be casting judgment on, on us heathens and sinners and, 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 and the sodomites and, and all of the other assorted, um, you know, heretics. Um, so, yeah, you know, the Bible does clearly say in, in a lot of places that it's not for the masses to, to pass judgment. It's for God to pass judgment. It, it contradicts that in many other places. Uh, so really, they can take it either way, uh, but it is hypocritical of them to, to, to talk endlessly about free will and then, at the end of the day, try to uh, limit the amount of choices a person can make. They, you know, they want everyone to live by their doctrines. It's not good enough that they do it. They want other people to do it as well. Uh, misery loves company, I guess. Being objective, do you feel that there are any admirable qualities regarding religion and more so Christianity? Um, I would say that all of religion's qualities, good or bad, are, are not unique to religion. Um, people have a tendency to do good things, people have a tendency to do bad things, uh, and both are codified in the Bible. You can find great examples of, of uh, very admirable and very strong morality in the Bible, and you can find uh, the most horrific things you can imagine in the Bible, and both um, portrayed in a positive light. Um, the difference here, the, the problem with religion is that, is not that it codifies the positive things, it's that it codifies the negative things. Uh, why do people feel like they need this codification to begin with, uh, is the question we should ask. Why do people feel like, unless there is a divine being that, that set down these rules in stone somewhere, that they don't matter otherwise? I think we have to get to the psychology beyond that if we ever want to, there to be a, a secular gauge uh, of morality. I believe a loud segment of Americans cheer for their religious beliefs much the way they cheer for their favorite sports teams. In this screaming match of righteousness, which team is going to emerge victorious? Um, none of them. They're all going to destroy one another, or they're all going to uh, look at, at secularization. Um, you know, if we continue to, to be a, a planet, of, of religious fundamentalists, uh, or even religious moderates, we're going to wind up destroying ourselves. Um, 
luckily, the number of atheists in this world is rising. The number of theists is declining. Um, the bad thing, the bad news is that religions like Islam are growing, and they have not had their version of the Reformation yet. They are still very much uh, into a literalist interpretation of the Quran and the Hadith, and and most of them are are, are very much extremists. Um, there are, to this day, Christian extremists. But in, in Islam, everyone is an extremist, uh, except for the, the Muslims who are over here in America, uh, or some of the Muslims in England who, who claim a more moderate uh, viewpoint. Uh, a lot of them are disingenuous, and quite a few of them are, are just outright liars and a lot of them are isolated from mainstream Islam and they come to erroneous conclusions about it based on the lies of these uh, supposed moderates who are not really moderates at all. Hypothetical situation. Jesus' DNA is found in his tomb. Using the scientific method of cloning, a virgin named Mary is impregnated with his DNA and she gives birth to him in a barn. Discuss the implications of this. The destruction of the entire world, uh, because half the people would would want him to be the new king of the world, and half the people would think he was the antichrist, and and um, well, half the Christians anyway, and and and, and the Muslims w would be outraged, and they would would resent uh, the idea that this being was holy. Uh, the, the other, all of the other religions would be, be incensed. Uh, the atheists would be outraged. Everyone would be, everyone would have a fucking tizzy fit, basically. And, and I think it would lead to, to, to World War III, ultimately. It would be the most divisive human action ever fucking done. Um, let's hope that no one ever finds any DNA that they claim to be Jesus's and let's uh, let's hope that if they do they're they're laughed at what is your stance on Jesus's existence as a historic person do you think what was written 60 plus years after his supposed death in the New Testament can be considered strong evidence uh, I've always said that I don't really give a shit if, if Jesus was a, a historical figure or not and neither should most Christians, um, because the Christians seem to, to tell me all the time that the miracles don't matter, that, that the only Jesus' teachings are, are what's really important. Uh, if that's the case, then you should have no trouble following him if he was just a mortal man. You should have no trouble following him if he was never a mortal man of the flesh and blood. If it's the morality that you want to follow, then that is what you should follow. Um, and not the idea of a, maybe a super being or the idea of, of, a, of a flesh and blood person. Um, you should follow the ideas that you think are good. I was born a Brahmin Hindu and fairly indifferent towards all religions. I also consider myself an agnostic, leaning towards atheism, but I feel like it's a huge fucking moral stance going from I don't give a shit about God to God doesn't exist. Did you ever have this period when you went through this transition? Uh, no, I did not. Um, actually, I kind of bounced back and forth, to be honest with you, um, between just not giving a shit and being a strong atheist. Um, I'm always an atheist, but I think that my anti-theism is something that is, has an on and off switch, and sometimes it's turned on and sometimes it's turned off. Um, but I, I've always been an atheist, at least as long as I can remember. Um, I dismissed the idea of God long before I dismissed the idea of Santa Claus, for instance, or, or even of the Tooth Fairy. I'm just going to do one more page of this for now. Could God create a dildo so large that it couldn't fit up even his ass? That's a very good question. I think I posed that myself at one point. That was my variation of the, uh, the, the rock thing. The Simpsons had its burrito variation, and I had my cock variation. Um, 
Uh, you know, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> That's about all you could do with that. Does it ever bother you that Christians will preach about honesty when in reality they are never truly honest with themselves about the insufficient proof of God? Well, obviously that does trouble me. Why do things react with each other? Is it determined by the smaller pieces that construct them? Is it until you get to quantum particles? But how is it determined what they will do or what their options are? Well, I, I don't... I don't like you ap applying sentience to particles. Um, you know, um, things react. Uh, the physical properties of things react in, 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 in certain ways in relations to one another because of, of um, essential differences in, in mass and, and in, uh, you know, in, in the number of particles in something or, or um, the... Uh, how tightly the the atoms are compacted, or or, or the um, you know I mean it, it, it's not like there's you know some some point where they you know like a a, a quantum particle like decides well I'm going to do this today it, it's something that is a natural process. Um, and, and you can boil anything down. You can ask endless whys of, of any of anything, and you should. But um, ultimately, you know, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, I see where this is going. It's like, you know, why is top of the water? And you can argue that it's because it's lighter or or, or whatever, and. Eventually, you get to a point where you're, you've asked too many whys, and it, it doesn't. It, the answer is no longer readily available. And then, of course, a Christian comes along, or a Muslim, or any religious person comes along and says, "Oh, well, that must be where God, you know, kicks in." But um, you know, that's really got to be a, a boring ass gig for God, deciding what every particle is going to be doing at any given time. Um, it, it really kind of strikes you as an all-powerful number cruncher, you know, the divine accountant in the sky. Ooh, this one going here, and this one going here. Um, yeah, that's not really uh, that impressive of a divinity, uh, except in the mere calculability uh, that he would have to possess, uh, the ability to calculate uh, equations well beyond anything that we can even comprehend. Uh, even cumulatively as a species. Um, if God exists and he is everywhere, does that mean he's in our poop? Yes. Everywhere means everywhere. <laughs> I always love when Christians say God is everywhere because that means he's up your ass, he's inside your cock or your pussy, He's in every fucking booger that you ever wiped on, you know, uh, the bottom of, of your chair at work. Um, he's, um, he, he, you know, if you pop a zit on your forehead, he's in the pus. Um, you know, you got a, a cavity, that tooth decay, that's God. You know, I always thought that was kind of interesting. I mean, does that mean, I mean... It, it's kind of strange that God is everywhere, you know, yet when Christians say God is everywhere, usually they mean like he's in the sunset or he's in a, a beautiful garden or, or, or like, you know, it's the trees. They're not thinking about, you know, dog shit and fucking rats and, 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 and um, you know, they, they're, they're, not, they're not considering all the nasty things that are out there when they say those things. Uh, they're not thinking about leeches when they say God is everywhere, they're thinking about the pretty things, you know, sunsets and, and waterfalls and, and rainbows. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Assuming for a moment that God exists, could he drive a tractor? Personally, I think he could, but I appreciate your view on this issue. Now, that is one of the most important questions I've ever been asked, but I just, I cannot even formulate an answer worthy of that question, so I'm going to skip right by it. 
If there was a God... Oh, that's the same thing. No, it's not. It's a different one. If there was a God, which of course is not the Judeo-Christian God, what do you think he would be like? Uh, utterly incomprehensible. Um, he would be... It's funny, a Muslim actually wrote me a few days ago, because I said uh, I said a very similar statement about God not too long ago. I said that if there was a God, he, his nature would be beyond anything that we as human beings can understand. And the Muslim wrote me and said, that's exactly what it says in the Quran. It's like, woo, wow, purpose defeated. Um, the Quran makes assumptions about the moral nature of God. It makes assumptions about what God wants for us, and so does the Hadith. Uh, you know, it's funny that m Muslims try to convert atheists. I don't think that anyone is going to go from being a staunch atheist to a Muslim. Uh, I could see them going to Christianity. Um, I could see them going to, to, to Buddhism or, or, you know, moderate Christianity, not fundamentalist Christianity. Um, I'm talking about hardcore atheists. I'm not talking about just apatheists or, or people who just don't care or people who just dismiss God for emotional reasons. I'm talking about, you know, a Richard Dawkins archetype atheist. Um, I could see someone like that maybe going to a, 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 you know, slightly spiritual viewpoint. But I can't see them going to Islam. Sorry. Um, anyway, God would be utterly incomprehensible. His mind would work nothing like a human mind. It wouldn't even... It, it, it wouldn't be a consciousness. You have to understand that. It would be something beyond consciousness. He would have to be so conscious that, like, the way we are conscious as compared to, say, like, a rock would be how conscious God must be in comparison to us. Uh, even that might misrepresent the vastness of the gap that would have to exist between the thought process of a tiny mammal on a, a worthless little rock in a tiny little solar system compared to the creator of the entire cosmos who regulates all reality. Possibly of multiple universes. So God would be like nothing you could ever even hope to conceive of if indeed there was a God. I'll leave it for you to, for you to decide. Have you read any of the famous arguments for the existence of God such as Thomas Aquinas, Aqu Aquinas, Five Ways, or the ontological argument as proposed by Anselm and Descartes. I'm actually an atheist, just wondering how many of my fellow atheists familiarize themselves with such arguments for the purpose of crushing them in debate, usually. Thanks. Uh, I've never actually gone to the source material, but I've heard bastardizations of their arguments from Christians. And I, I probably heard not, I won't say bastardizations, I'll, I'll say uh, summarizations of their arguments from Christians. And I've dealt with them all, and I've read the criticisms of them. Uh, I've never actually gone to the source material because it seems uh, futile to, to, to read something that you've already understood uh, merely from hearing the refutations. Um, I, I, I think I should read a few Christian books, though. I would like to kind of get into that Christian mindset. I was thinking about picking up uh, C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity uh, because uh, it looked like it was pretty short, and that's always a good thing when I'm reading something I don't really want to be reading. But if you Christians out there have any other recommendations, I am open to reading a few of your books right now because I just want to tear them apart. Um, so... Keep that in mind. If you give me a recommendation to a book you really like, I am planning on shredding it to pieces. Not literally, of course. Well, probably not. We'll do one more. Why do atheists have anger towards agnostics? I've been arguing some points lately, and I'm surprised to find hostility. Seems like we're on the same page, but I guess not. Thanks, AA. 
I think atheists find the position of agnosticism to be intellectually dishonest. Uh, a lot of us do, not all of us, of course, uh, but many atheists find that position to be dishonest uh, for the, the reason that, um, that it's really a, uh, an epistemological uh, question of, of, um, of whether or not we can know that God does or does not exist. Uh, true agnosticism means that you do not believe that God's existence is provable. Uh, you still, after deciding to be agnostic, have to choose between theist or, or non, or atheist, non, non-theist. Um, because, you know, you, that can't just be the end of it. I mean, you have to choose between agnosticism or Gnosticism, and then you still have to choose between theism or atheism. Uh, most agnostics are atheists. Some agnostics are definitely uh, theists or deists. Deist is another choice. You can be a deist. Um, um, or a polytheist, even. Um, yeah. So uh, that's, that's why there's a little bit of aggression there. Um, I think we feel like you guys are kind of like sitting on the fence. Um, and a lot of you guys act like it's a position unto itself when it's genuinely not. And I'm sure plenty of you will have, um, will take issue with that. I'm not going to answer the rest of these questions right now because I don't want to make this video too long. I'm sure it's already ridiculously long as it is. Amazing Atheist! Peace the fuck out!